Good morning and welcome. This is uh, the Network for Africa webinar, which today we are going to present the purpose and description of Network for Africa, as well as give you a walkthrough on the Network for Africa Community of Practice web page. My name is Barbara O'Hanlon, and I am the Senior Private Sector Policy Advisor for the USAID-funded project, SHOPS. And I have the pleasure today of introducing our colleague from Nairobi, Kenya, Daniel Adero from RATN. RATN, as Daniel will explain to you shortly, is the NGO from Kenya that is now taking over the leadership and technical direction of Network for Africa. But before we get into the particulars of the Network for Africa online community and website, I would just like to give a quick history of where we come from and where we're going to. Daniel, can I have the next slide, please? <coughs> Network for Africa was initially an activity started under the SHOPS predecessor project, PSP1, or the Private Sector Partnership Project. The reason why we started the Network for Africa is in our field work through Africa, we recognized a growing interest as well as need for both public and private sector leaders to better understand the benefits of public-private partnerships in health. Given limited resources, we did not have the opportunity to bring together frequently <laughs> leaders from these various African countries. And as a result, we decided to create a virtual community of practice that focuses on common issues of concern on the private health sector. And the main purpose of this group is to bring together leaders from ministries of health, leaders from the different segments of the private health sector in Africa in a forum that would allow them to raise different technical issues and policy issues that they could discuss. And so through the various activities of Network for Africa, over the last five years, we've been able to promote continued dialogue and engagement from the players to improve the relationship between the two sectors with the ultimate outcome of improving the health for all in the region. So that's a little bit of the vision. I'm happy to state that over the years, our membership has grown from a small community of 15, <coughs> over 550 members that are from not only the African region, but globally, all with an interest in improving the health in Africa through partnerships between the public and private health sector. So with that little bit of history, I'd like to turn the microphone over to my colleague, Daniel, who will um, take us through the tour of the Network for Africa. Daniel? Yes, Mabra. Can you hear me? We can. Please go ahead. All right. Um, thank you, Barbara, for that wonderful introduction and actually uh, taking us through the vision of Network for Africa. Um, I will pick it from there, and uh, I would just want to bring attention to some of the activities that we do as Network for Africa. Um, as Barbara has mentioned, Network for Africa is a, a repository and clearinghouse uh, of Africa-centered information and research that um, tools on PPP policy and PPP projects in health. This is where people interested in getting to know more about uh, health PPPs in Africa and also who want to know to get the tools that are used in uh, initiating and actually running the PPP initiatives can log on and get the resources. 
Uh, second to that, uh, another activity that we have is... Um, What's going on? Um, hi, Daniel, quickly, this is Thierry. Um, they, there might be a delay in the slide, so if you press once to go up, back or up, uh, you just might want to wait for a second before the next slide shows up. Thank you. All right. Um, second to that, Net of Africa uh, holds technical exchanges between public and private sector leaders on important health issues. These are meetings where we bring members of the community of practice together to discuss issues on uh, public-private partnerships uh, that are happening within their areas of work, be it the public sector or be it the private sector. And in the recent past, we've had several uh, technical exchanges, the last one being in Mombasa that was held in 2010, that was um, titled Mombasa Technical Exchange on PPP in HIV and AIDS, that was in Mombasa. Uh, prior to that, we held another one the same year in Ogadou, that was Ogadou Technical Exchange on Health PPPs. So uh, the purpose of conducting technical exchanges is to bring people together uh, so that they can deliberate on issues that they've been deliberating online physically and to discuss this at further uh, technical levels. So that's another activity. Network Public also holds webinars and uh, similar to what we're currently doing, these webinars bring a private sector uh, on private sector initiatives throughout the region. During our webinars we bring experts or other people who are implementing PPP projects from various countries to, um, to tell others on what they are doing in their project. Uh, the recent one being held in June 2013 was a webinar on Jacaranda Health where we had uh, um, Faith, who is the CEO for Jacaranda, taking uh, people through what model Jacaranda Health is using to reach the poorest poor in Kenya and actually to deliver on uh, the health issues that they are targeting to address. We also have uh, interviews whereby in Network for Africa we conduct membership interviews uh, intended to share expertise and experience on a wide range of topics related on the private sector in health. This is um, where we interview members of the community of practice to tell us more on what they have and also to share the experiences and the expertise with others who are also within the community of practice. The last interview we had was, um, as you can see on the screen, was an interview of uh, Professor Walter O'Cook, who is the chairman of the Kenya Health Care Federation and also a Network for Africa member. So during these interviews, we intend to bring members um, on in interchangeable levels. We intend to bring members who have uh, different experiences to share the experiences with other members of the community so that in case the members who have uh, issues in that area, they can, we can have them address them. Another activity that we conduct as Network for Africa is um, South-South linkages uh, with the aim of promoting the concept of PPPs in health. This is whereby we encourage uh, interactions between members from different countries we bring the members from different countries together so that they can actually engage each other on different levels, whereby Namibia, for instance, can be able to learn on what Kenya is doing, South Africa can be able to learn on what Nigeria is doing, uh, Uganda can be able to learn on what Zimbabwe is doing. So that is um, what we do to ensure that there are South to South linkages to promote the concept of PPPs in health across Africa. Maybe somebody might want to know who the members of Network for Africa are. And uh, I want to just to go through just a brief of uh, a few of the members that we have uh, as Network for Africa. Network for Africa brings together high-level Ministry of Health officials. Uh, these are people who work in the public sector and the Ministry of Health under different capacities and who have signed up to be members of this community of practice. We also have Ministry of Health staff responsible for various health PPPs, or various health PPP units within their ministries, also signing up as members of the community of practice. We also have government representatives from other agencies, 
uh, maybe like Ministry of Finance and other uh, ministries that work together to ensure that uh, the, the delivery of health outcomes are achieved within the various countries. Network of Africa also brings together um, people from uh, faith-based and non-governmental health organizations. These might be CEOs, executives, directors, program implementers from faith-based organizations or non-governmental organizations that work in the areas of health and who have signed up to be Network for Africa members. We also have executives from various private uh, sector entities representing the wide range of health enterprises. These might be investors, they might be business people, they might be people who have got their private practices but uh, targeting health. So the, the owners of such entities, members or others who work in such departments are also members of the community of practice. We also have private sector health practitioners from international donor agencies. Um, like if you can go through the current directory, you'll find that we have uh, various members from various donor agencies like the GIZ, the World Bank. Um, so such also sign up to become members of the Network for Africa community of practice. Um, last but not least, we have researchers, academia, and private uh, practitioners or private individuals who have an interest in health. Those who have actually taken the initiative to sign up and uh, become members of the Network for Africa community of practice. So Network for Africa in a nutshell brings a wide range of people and individuals from various sectors in health who have an interest in the delivery of <coughs> public health, but through the initiatives that are uh, championed by the public-private partnerships. So that, that sums up uh, the list of uh, Network for Africa members. Um, to learn more about that, you can actually log, sign up uh, as a member of the community of practice and you'll be able to see who are these people that we are talking about uh, that are actually forming this community of practice. Since its in initiation um, in 2008, Network for Africa has been able to achieve various, uh, various objectives. First to this is the dissemination of knowledge globally on PPP approaches in health in the African region. This is where Network for Africa staff do go to various uh, workshops, various seminars, various meetings to deliver or rather to share knowledge on PPP approaches in health and also to share tools that are used in PPP um, with people in various groupings, be it a health seminar, be it um, private practitioners, workshops. Network for Africa staff have, have actually managed to disseminate such knowledge globally and more so to the African region. We've also been able to facilitate uh, change, uh, changes in the government attitudes and the perspectives on the private health sector collaboration. During our existence, we've been able to actually do away with some of the myths that have actually made it difficult for the public sector to work with the private health sector so that they can deliver together the important health agenda. And through our discussions, through our dialogues, through our meetings, through our webinars, through our tech exchanges, we've been able to, to spearhead the change in attitude. Actually, we've been like the agenda, um, we set the agenda for change in both in the government sector and in the private sector. And now we can see that various uh, countries are actually adopting the need to work together as the public and the private health sector to see uh, delivery of greater health outcomes. We've also been able to assist newly formed PPP units to exchange draft health PPP policies and implementation tools with each other. As I mentioned, um, Network for Africa is a repository for tools, the repository for policy documents, is a repository for other materials that are used in um, the creation and actually running of the PPP units in health. So through our, over our, the year that we've existed, we've been able to assist various PPP units to exchange drafts and also to share tools that actually they use in implementing their various policies. And this also we do through such webinars where well, we can bring um, an expert or rather an implementer who has a PPP unit to show people on what and how they go about implementing their, pro their projects. Um, last but not least, we've also been able to, net 
to network private sector leaders, resulting in regional coordination. <clears throat> Actually, through the dialogue that has taken place in our platforms, uh, that is um, webinars, technical exchanges, our newsletters, and uh, our interviews, we've been able to bring together uh, private sector leaders and actually we've seen the creation of uh, formidable units through as a result of our discussions or other discussions that have been going through on through our platform. For instance, um, just to mention the East Africa Healthcare Federation, the idea um, was initiated through dialogues that were happening in um, Network for Africa organized uh, tech co exchanges and other meetings. So we've, we've been able to see various private health sectors form various units within their specific countries or within their regions uh, through the dialogue that we've been championing for PPPs in health. So um, that's a, some that a few of the accomplish, accomplishments that we've uh, actually managed to achieve since 2008. And how do we go about uh, achieving our objectives? Network for Africa um, has a website that we use as a tool, a main tool to deliver our objectives. And this website is, is divided into two spaces. Um, first, we, we have the public space and we have the private space. The public space actually is the landing page for Network for Africa. This is meant to, to ensure that people who have actually not signed up to be members of the community of practice can also get a glimpse of what we are doing as Network for Africa, so that actually we can interest them to join the community of practice. So on your screen is the landing page on uh, the public space for the Network for Africa community of practice. This page is visible to anybody who actually hasn't signed up to be a member of the community of practice. That is the landing page. Next to it is we have, uh, after the landing page, um, on the right pane we have uh, our newsletter, where you can see the Network for Africa newsletter. If you click on that link, you'll be able to go to our newsletter and actually read the newsletter that we published uh, ever since. Just uh, demonstrate this. If you click on that link, you'll be able to also to view the interviews that we are talking about. If you click on the link on your screen, you'll be able to view the interviews with n 4 members that we are talking about. Next, you can also be able to view the announcement on health PPPs or events going on in the region on our recent announcement um, link. Next to recent announcement is the news story, whereby you can go and get read about N4 members' achievements, challenges, um, new creations, whether the new emerging PPP units. Whether the, what's going on actually around PPPs across Africa and the entire globe. If you click on that link and you're not a member of the community of practice, you'll be able to actually read some of the news stories that we actually post on our website. Next, the resources. This is where you can come and uh, get some of the resources as a person who is not a member of the community of practice. If you click on the link to the resources, You'll be able to search through articles, publications, reports, presentations, tools, and other resources that we've been post we've been have, we've posted here. These are majorly from N4 members, and they are majorly on public-private partnerships in health. That's those are resources that are actually accessible by members or other people who are not members of the community of practice. So even those who are not members of the Network for Com of Africa Community of Practice have a chance to get a glimpse of what we are doing as Network for Africa through the pages that I've actually taken you through. For instance, if you go to the link for our newsletters, you'll be able to read our monthly newsletters. And remember, these are sent directly to email addresses. So when you sign up, when you sign up on our page, you'll be able to, to actually check on um, an option whether you want to receive our communication and when you check on that option you'll be able to receive our monthly newsletters directly to your email addresses. This happens automatically. So on that window displays uh, some of actually this was our newsletter for May 2013 and you can actually see some of the articles that uh, were on that page. So our newsletter is actually titled Help PPPs in the News because it actually handles issues of uh, public-private partnerships in health. 
So you can be able to read various versions. And um, if you click on that link, you'll be able to see we have got um, there's the June 2013 newsletter, May 2013, April 2013, and so on and so forth. So you can view any issues that were published before, and actually you can view the current issue of our newsletter on this page. So you can click on any link to view the newsletter that actually you are interested in. So as we said, this is a repository. That's why all the resources that we posted here, actually you can find them here. All our newsletter versions, you can actually come and find them here. So this is a public space. That's a public space. And another thing that you can actually still access through the public space is, is the member interviews that I'm talking about. If you look at them, what is on your page, you can actually see um, on the home page for the mem Network for African Members interviews, they are listed there. You can actually click on which interview to view. For instance, um, on the screen there are four. The last one being uh, the interview for Thierry Mahoro on how to how the Network for Africa is bringing together public and private health practitioners. This happened in April this year uh, when uh, uh, Thierry Mahoro, who is uh, one of the Network for Africa staff, was interviewed about um, how Network for Africa is bringing together public and private health practitioners to ensure that the public health uh, outcomes are delivered. So when you, you can choose on any interview to watch. You can, if you want to watch the interview about um, Walter O'Cork on unifying the private health sector, you can just click on that link. So member interviews are actually a short video clips on key public-private topics in health. These are topical issues. Uh, and what we do is we, when there's a, a topic going on in the public or the private uh, health sector, and actually, we need uh, people to respond to that. We we check on a member who has a specific background to that, and we interview these people so that we we, we inform the agenda and we, we be part of the discussions that are going on in the public-private uh, health sectors uh, in Africa as a region or globally. So um, that's it. Next, if you click on that, you will be able to read our announcements. Sorry for that. Our announcement on your screen is a list of various announcements that we've been making. And actually, you can be able to read. You can search by title. If you know the title of the announcement, you can actually click here and read the specific announcement, be it a new publication, be it a webinar, be it maybe there's a new project, be it there's a, an association that has been formed. All these land on our announcements page. And you can see the last announcement was made in September where there was a new publication. Um, so when you come to Central for Africa website on this announcements page, be it that you're a member of the community practice or not, you'll be able to actually access it and be able to read some of the announcements that we, we've, we've done over the time period. Also, we have got the new story that I was talking about. The last one, the last um, on your screen, there's a story that, that was Engaging Health Innovators and Investors. So these new stories, they feature n members, activities, success stories, challenges, special events that actually touch on uh, partnership between the public and the private health sectors. So all the new stories on our page will actually have something to do with a public um, and private sector forming an association or maybe a, a, a PPP unit having achieved something, you know, so this page is dedicated to highlight stories from our members, their activities, their successes, their challenges, and also maybe their, just to make the stories of what they've been able to achieve. That is about um, the n for member stories. After that, we have got, after, after that, we have got the private space. And this private space, is accessible to members of the community of practice. Somebody might want to maybe ask, why do I really need to join the community of practice if actually I can get all that resources in the public space? However, you might realize that uh, if you've joined and you've signed up as a member of the community of practice, you'll have easy access to technical resources which are available to one place. Yes, the resources, some of the resources are available to the, on the public space. However, 
if you want to have more resources that are actually accessible through the private space. And that is why we encourage people to join the community of practice. Secondly, through the private space, there are opportunities for networking with other members, something that you'll not be able to get access to on the, on the public space. On the private space also, we have regular updates on what's happening in PPPs in health across Africa. And actually, these, you can, if you go to the private space page, you'll be able to see what touches on your area of expertise, what touches on your area of, of operation, what touches on your country. These updates are actually made on the private space of the Network for Africa Community of Practice. Also, there are most comprehensive resources and other news on health people in Africa through the monthly e-letters. Though the monthly e-letters are accessible to the public space, but if you, if you are a member of the community of practice, you'll be able to get most comprehensive analysis and even discussions, even follow-ups on the stories that are actually highlighted in the newsletters. These are actually happening on the private space that is accessible to members who have signed up to become com community practice members. Also, as a community practice member, you get opportunity to meet and share ideas and experience with others who are interested in health PPPs because you realize that we have got technical exchanges. And this, we only bring members of the community practice together. So once you're a member of the community practice, you never know, you, you get a chance and an opportunity to meet and share ideas with people with similar ideas or people like-minded colleagues. So that's why you need to join the community of practice. There are more technical resources, as I said, that are actually accessible to members of the community of practice only. Like you see on the page, we have got N4 technical resources. This is just accessible to members of the community of practice because the people can be able to come, download, and even comment on such documents. So that's the reason why uh, we encourage people to join the community of practice. Except that, somebody might ask, why or how does somebody become a member of the community of practice? On your screen is the members corner link, and this members corner link gives you the opportunity to add another site. So this is just accessible to members of the private space, or rather members of the community of practice. And as I said before, you need to take an initiative to sign up, become a member of the community of practice. Now when you click on the link, of enter the site, it brings you to this page. This is a landing page to the private space of the Network for Africa Community of Practice. You look at what is up on your screen. Uh, there is a um, members login, members login window. If you are a member who has signed up, you can actually come here and um, enter your username and a password and you'll be able to log in to the community of practice or rather the private space. However, if you're not registered, if you're not registered yet, on the right hand side is um, on the right pane where we have got the members, there's the link to login, then there's the, the link to register. You need to click on that link, register, then it will give you the opportunity to set up your profile, tell us what you're doing, and um, you'll be able to register. Now once you log in, this is now the, the home page for the Network for Africa Community of Practice members. There's a welcome note, actually welcoming you to more upcoming events, latest discussions, most recently added documents in the navigation menu on the right. So on this page, you'll be able to actually view and actually to know who are the members that you are talking about. Because previously I was just talking about members of the community practice. Somebody might ask, where are these members? So you just need to sign up, then you'll be able to access these members. For instance, if you see on the left side of the pane, there's the newest member who is Nedim, Nedima Obi. So if you click on that link for Nedima Obi, you'll be able to read her profile or his profile and get to know from which country, from which sector, is it from the private sector, is it from the public sector, and what are the interests of this person, so that you'll be able to know at what level you can engage with members of this community of practice. For instance, um, you can read uh, Neka Isidiano. Neka Isidiano says, um, um, L L LWI is academic officer assisting the faculty of LWF training programs such as training for cervical cancer screening and first aid CPR. So just just that brief alone is, is, is able to tell you 
what interest Nanika has or what area of expertise is Nanika operating in. So this is only accessible to members of the community of practice and that is why you need to sign up to become a member of the Nanika Africa community of practice. We also said that uh, if you're a member of the Network for Africa community of practice, it's only when you'll be able to get latest discussion and actually be able to participate. On your screen is the latest discussion. Um, the latest, the most recent discussion uh, is uh, on public engagement in health priority setting. It was an article. And if you're only a member of the community of practice, is when you'll be able to read this article and actually to comment. You see there's already a comment there and this tells that this page is active and there are actually people who come back to read. Also on the screen we have got latest documents and these are where latest documents that are, have been posted to the community of practice are accessible. There's a list of several and if you click on the link of view all below the page you'll be able to actually see all the documents that have been posted to this uh, community practice page. That is about latest documents. So how do you get to uh, connect to Network for Africa members? How do you get to engage with people of this community practice? We have um, recently joined Facebook to ensure that we get more timely interactions with members of our, of our community practice. Our link is on the screen. If you click on that link, you'll be able to like our page to comment on the discussions that are going on, to even contribute and also to even initiate a discussion, post a question and get an answer on that. We also have a Twitter handle whereby we uh, comment, discuss and deliberate on issues about health PPPs across Africa. Our Twitter handle is at N4A underscore health, PPP, health PPPs. So if you go to Twitter, you search us with our Twitter handle or our name Network for Africa, you'll be able to find, to follow us on Twitter and anytime we post something on our website, it will be able to reflect on your Twitter page, on your Facebook page. So apart from the, the website, we have the social media. This now also ensure that members interact on a more frequent way. So welcome you to Venus on this. You can follow us on uh, Twitter. You can also like our page on Facebook, post your discussions, join our discussions, make comments, um, start a discussion, ask questions, and even seek for clarification. Um, we'll also be able to be posting some tools, some documents on the social media accounts. So actually the intention of this webinar was to ensure that we tell you how we want to get a contribution to ensure that we make Network for Africa even a better place to be, a better community to be, and we have the best platforms to share knowledge in PPPs in health across Africa. So first of all, we'd like to we'd like to ask you to share relevant de developments in health policy and PPPs from your country. If you go back to the private page, we have got um, a place where you can share your discussions, you can post your documents, you can ask your questions. So we'd like to share, you'd like you to share with us these relevant de developments in the health policies and PPPs from your country so that we make this community even richer in, in material and richer in resources. Also, you can send us announcements on events that you are you're sponsoring or events that you're planning to attend on private health sector engagement in Africa. And we'll be able to publicize these events for you and also to maybe invite other people for you to join your events. We also like you to contribute to our technical resources that that you use to work on private health sector projects. If you have any resources that you are actually currently using to deliver your, your objectives, we welcome you to share these with the members of the Network for Africa community practice. You can also ask questions, start discussions using our website, our Facebook page, our Twitter accounts, and also join the discussions from wherever you are using our various uh, communication uh, platforms. You can give us your feedback on anything that we do. You can share with us any experiences that you have. You can share with us the lessons, the challenges, and share with us what you're doing in your country in PPPs and what are the hot topics in PPPs. 
Aside from that, we have monthly e-letters, and this is meant to actually broadcast the the uh, various um, developments in your countries. So we welcome you to contribute on a, if not a weekly basis, but on a monthly basis, to, to be sending us stories, to be sending us announcements, to be sending us developments from your countries, so that we can post the same on our e-letters and circulate it for wide reach uh, through our various uh, platforms. Thank you very much for listening to our webinar. That brings, the, uh, the, brings us to the end of uh, actually the public space and the private space of the Network of Africa. And we encourage you to, in case of um, any questions, I think you can use the questions pane on your screen, on your GoToMeeting screen, there's a place for questions. If you have any questions, you can post them there so that we can actually react to them now. And if there are any that we can't handle now, we can react to them and share with members of the community of practice. Thank you very much. And uh, I think Barbara yes. will, you, um, we, you will take us through responding the to the various questions that we have. Yes, thank, thank you, you so much, Daniel. That was a very comprehensive presentation, and I hope it's going to um, motivate and encourage more people to become members. We do have our first question from um, Nika, and uh, the question is, how does an organization register to become a member of Network for Africa? Mm -hmm. Do you want to respond to that, Barbara? Uh, I think Thierry, my colleague here, would like to respond to that. Um, hi. Um, I actually saw that Nick is already a member of the online community of practice. Um, I yeah. think that's one of the ways to register. Um, Network for Africa has members who are individuals and organizations. So as an individual, I think you're already registered. Um, as, as an organization, then the representative of the organization can sign up and if you use the, um, the email address of the organization, then the correspondences will be sent to, to the organization. Um, you can also send an email and a message to um, the Neo of Africa staff and send a request. Um, and then we will be, we'll make sure to get your organization added as a member of Neo Network for Africa. You can also mention that in the community of practice. Um, say, mentioned that you in a discuss on the discussion board, you can just mention that you'd like to be a member and we'll make sure to respond to you and uh, take it over from there. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions? Um, I know a common question we get is, um, is there a charge or a cost to become a member of Network for Africa? Daniel, do you want to answer that? Yeah, no problem. Um, basically, Network for Africa community of practice charges nothing to become a member because, as we said, this is more or less a virtual community of practice. So becoming a member is free. It's free of charge. What you need to do is just to take the initiative to register and you become a member. We don't charge anything for membership uh, to Network for Africa. I think that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Now, there's another question about who is RATN and uh, what is their role with Network for Africa? Uh -huh. I think uh, I will respond to that. Uh, can I go ahead and respond to that question? Oh, absolutely, please. All right. RATN, um, otherwise known as Regional AIDS Training Network, is a membership-based institution that uh, has membership across Africa. RTN is a capacity-building institution on health, and it has its presence in the whole of Africa. Basically, RTN is an NGO uh, headquartered in Nairobi, and RTN's role in Network of Africa is simple. RTN is um, in a few months time, Ariton is going to be the manager and um, the sole caretaker of Network for Africa. As mentioned, Network for Africa was started um, 
under PSP1 project and now is being managed, um, is under SHOPS project, being managed by ABD Associates in collaboration with RITN. So RITN's role is to manage the community of practice activities and all the events. So RITN role is to plan, to oversee, to conduct, to manage and to ensure that members of the community of practice interact with each other. So it's like the driving uh, force for Network for Africa is like the manager, is like the custodian of this community of practice. In a nutshell, RTN has a okay. RTN has a um, set. Um, what do we say? RTN has a wing, has a staff dedicated to managing the activities of community Network for Africa community of practice. That is the role of RTN. It's the management organization and Thank the you, custodian yeah, of Network for Africa. Terrific. Okay, we have another question from Elizabeth Corley, and she says, does Network for Africa work with the public-private partnership uh, for health in Kenya? Um, and I, I'll, I'll take that question. Thank you, Elizabeth, for the question. Um, PPP Health Kenya, uh, for those of you who um, may not know what this organization is, is um, a group of public and private sector leaders who came together to create a forum in which they can address major issues like um, national health insurance, uh, reforming the laws on um, uh, private uh, for private professional licensing and facilities. Um, they set the agenda on the issues. Um, and then they come together and discuss them and share the, uh, the discussions with their res uh, respective organizations. Um, and Network for Africa um, doesn't work directly with PPP Health Kenya, but similar to the experience with um, the East Africa Health Federation, that Danielle mentioned, um, many of the members of PPP Health Kenya are actually members of Network for Africa. And, oh, I think we have some noise from um, the Nairobi side. Daniel, can you please mute your, your speaker? Um, and through their, um, uh, the PPP Health Kenya uh, members' participation in various Network for Africa technical exchanges and workshops and seminars, um, they learned about the need for a public-private dialogue forum. And based on their learnings from N4A, they decided on their own initiative to form PPP Health Kenya. So that's the relationship. Okay, we have another question. Uh, when is the next scheduled webinar or Network for Africa event? Daniel, would you like to share um, about where N4A is going to be present at some of the upcoming um, East African and Southern Africa events? Daniel? Hello? Uh -huh. yes. I can respond yes. to that, Barbara. Thank you. Um, you, are, you are asking when Net of Africa is going to host an event or rather to be present in an event next. Correct. So we have got various events lined up uh, for Net of Africa. First of all, we are, we're going to have a presence in, at the ICASA, ICASA conference, that is the International Conference on AIDS and STRs in Africa, which will be held in South Africa in December will be present at that event. Secondly, in the same December, uh, from uh, 8 to 10, we'll be present for the Africa PPP event that will be held in South Africa again, Africa PPP, Africa PPP conference. This is a conference that will bring together all the players in uh, public-private partnership uh, across Africa together to champion on various issues, not just health alone. Mm -hmm. Also, next year, in March, we have got two events again. In March, uh, from the day of uh, 10th to 14th, we'll be having 
a presence at the East Africa Healthcare Federation Conference that will be held in Nairobi Safari Park, Safari Park Hotel. Also in March, we will be having an event in Ethiopia. That's the I hear Barbara, you know about that. So those are some of the events that are actually upcoming in the next few months. And we will post uh, the announcements to these events to our newsletters, our, um, our websites, our Twitter accounts, and our Facebook. Just to mention, the, um, when you look at the, our last issue of the newsletter, that is the August newsletter, those who had a chance to read it, we have these events already announced there. So I think that answers the question of the next event, if I actually got the question right. Yes, yeah, thank you, Daniel. And then um, Barbara, I let me respond to the second part to, of that. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, the second part was about where, what is the next scheduled webinar. Correct. Right. Yes, so we have a next scheduled webinar that will be taking place in, um, in November. The next webinar will be taking place in November. So once we confirm the date, we'll be able to make the announcement on the community of practice. And what is the topic for this webinar, please? This it's webinar... The, uh, yeah, we still have we, we have two we have two topics that we want to discuss uh, in this webinar, and um, we'll confirm with the presenters. We are looking forward to having Live Well Initiative from Nigeria discuss with the participants their in, uh, their model, how they work to deliver health in Nigeria. Also, we have um, another project um, called Novo Nordis. It's also a PPP initiative within the Kenyan government, between the Kenyan government and um, a private se sector player. So eight of these will come up in November. So once we confirm which one will come first, we'll be able to make the announcement again on this platform. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do not see any more questions. Um, I would like to thank those of you who have been online for your participation. And uh, we look forward to seeing you online again, both um, as contributing to the Network for Africa um, webpage or, and most hopefully, as a member within the community of practice and posting your ideas and discussions. And I would like to thank Daniel again for his presentation and leadership in this effort. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next event, which will be the webinar in November. Thank you.